All right, good afternoon. Today is Wednesday, September 18th, 2019. We're shooting this video uh, for Oscar up in Kansas. You've been working with uh, Maria. Maria's standing here right beside me. Uh, say hi, Maria. Hi, Oscar. And we're here at North Texas Equipment. You can see that that sun is, is blinding us, but uh, we've got the truck right out here. I'm gonna walk around the truck and show you cosmetics of it real quick um, everything looks good in pictures but the video kind of will show you the cosmetic imperfections the truck's not perfect but for what it is we think it's in good shape um, you know but it is a work truck it's not a show truck so we like for people to, to know everything about them just walking around the paint um, you know does gonna have scratches dings and dents the truck has not been repainted uh, be leery of trucks that have been repainted. A lot of times they're trying to hide severe corrosion issues on these trucks, northern trucks that have a ton of issues. Um, this does have a little crack here, uh, you know, in the fiberglass hood. Um, that is fairly common on these trucks, given the fact that they're bucket trucks and, and limbs get cut and things fall. It's got some also some discoloration and adhesive where the uh, uh, previous nomenclature and stickers were on the doors and fenders and things. Uh, the rack is in very good shape. Um, this truck does not have any significant rust or uh, corrosion issues at all. Um, it has not been covered up or hidden or anything. It just doesn't have it. So um, it's gonna have light surface rust on uh, unpainted sheet metal and things. But I mean, a truck that's lived its life in the South even has that. Um, it just doesn't have any of that Northern rust. So. The utility bed is also all original paint. Um, tires are in fantastic shape, 90% or better. Um, these uh, rear bends are not rusted out um, like they are in a lot of trucks. Coming around the back here, um, it does have a heavy duty pencil style hitch and uh, that's to pull a chipper or a heavy duty trailer of any kind. Uh, it's got some chips and things around the uh, rear of the bed. Uh, boom's in good shape. It is missing a door on this uh, toolbox here on the back. Um, if that's a huge deal, I can see if we can get that replaced for you. Just uh, letting you know it does not have it. A lot of times those get left open or uh, knocked off and that is uh, not super uncommon. So. Uh, coming around the driver's side, it's very similar to the passenger side. Uh, tires are very good, no corrosion. Now this box here on the back, I don't know if you can see, but it's a little bowed out. Uh, something heavy was in it at one time, apparently. Um, just purely cosmetic. Um, coming around the toolboxes, uh, just minor scrapes and dings and things. Uh, driver's door is in good shape, just some discoloration from the previous uh, business there. You can see uh, where the sticker was. Uh, where the sticker was actually in better shape. It's got glossy because it hadn't been a, been uh, exposed to the, the elements. So uh, there's the fuel tank, it's in good shape. Your outrigger, outrigger controls. Uh, front tires are a little weaker than the rear. Front tires are about 65, 70%. And then it also has a little uh, imperfection, little crack there, something heavy uh, fell from up above, I'm sure, a limb or something and cracked that that uh, that hood a little bit. But once again, it's not structural, it's purely cosmetic. Uh, coming around the front here, the grill is in very good shape. A lot of times those grills are beat up, windshields clean, uh, racks in good shape, bucket and things. I'm gonna have James, who's in the truck, go ahead and start it up so you can listen to it run. He's gonna engage the PTO and we're gonna fly the boom off the main engine so you can uh, hear everything uh, and see everything work. Um, that box up there by the chipper bed is a, uh, Maria said she told you about it, but that is a, uh, a door panel uh, for the interior. The door panels on these trucks, a lot of guys will pull on them uh, to slam the doors and they also you know, in windy situations, the door panel will get stressed when you do that. And uh, the door panels, we very, very common for us to replace them. And they are not cheap, so one of those deals, try to take care of them. Just putting the outriggers down now.
This is an Alltech LRV 55, uh, double over center, uh, 60 foot reach forestry boom. Um, it does have auxiliary hydraulics on the bucket to power auxiliary tools and things. Raising the main boom there. Um, at idle, the fact that the boom is moving that fast is a very, very good sign. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with bucket trucks, but if you have to rev an engine up a bunch to get the boom to move at a decent speed, you uh, have hydraulic pump issues. You either have a weak pump or you have a pump that is uh, too low a flow for its application. Um, either way, that's bad. So um, for a truck to be able to run at, you know, six, 700 RPM or whatever it's idling at, and still have a decent boom speed. Now the lower boom is always a little slower than the upper boom. Um, it's moving a lot more weight. Um, upper boom is fiberglass and uh, the lower boom is a hybrid boom. So upper boom always moves faster. It's gonna go ahead and put it all the way up and then he will rotate it 90 degrees to show you the rotational feature. I'm gonna back up a little more. I apologize for the shaking of the camera. I'm trying to get the... Uh... If you saw me, I got a broken arm and a screwed up leg and I'm trying to walk one-handed and hold my phone. So apologize for the crudeness of the video. Okay, so he's uh, pretty much straight up there. Now he's rotating uh, the boom. He's rotating it clockwise now. I don't know if you can see that, but the bucket is uh, turning toward the uh, chipper bed right there. Rotation is very smooth and fluid and quiet. Um, you know, the rotational feature of a bucket truck, if you were going to check one function, just to give you a tip, when you go look at a used bucket truck, if you want to pay attention to one function, what would it be? It would always be the rotation. Um, because the rotational feature by far is the most expensive item to repair and, and replace. Um, you know, the beauty of it is if it's been well maintained, it will last the life of the truck. Um, but if they are not uh, well maintained and lubricated and adjusted, um, they, the forces on them are greater than, than you'd think and they will just disintegrate and that rotational bearing a lot of times the boom has to come off the truck and you really want to stay away from trucks that have not been maintained in that area. So a lot of people think the hydraulics in the, in the boom are the biggest part. Um, that is not, has not been our experience. Um, this boom is, is very, very quiet. All the pins are quiet, no creaking. Now he's going to raise the uh, chipper bed show you that works you know on these forestry trucks the other uh, very common issue that we have is the selector valve that selects that's over on the passenger side to select from the outriggers to the uh, to the boom is also another issue, another place that we have issues a lot. Um, this one is in great shape. There's no issues, no leaks, no movement problems. Um, no leaks on the cylinder. If you ever see one that's all been freshly painted, um, it looks all super clean, know that uh, there's a good chance somebody's trying to hide something. This one. Um, you can see we did not paint the cylinder. We did not paint the uh, rails and brackets and things. It uh, is all in very, very good mechanical shape. All right, now James is gonna put everything down. Um, then after he gets it down, I will uh, let you see it drive off. He's gonna go and put it back in our yard and get to see that the truck does run, drive, and operate.
just to tell you a little bit more about these trucks, you may already know this, um, probably do. There's two ways to power the hydraulics. There uh, is the PTO off the main engine, which is typically the most problematic. Um, that's why we're powering it off that. Uh, showing you there's no whining or issues off the transmission. Uh, there's no leaks. Um, and then there's also your primary hydraulic power source normally will be the uh, three-cylinder Kubota pony motor. It is mounted on the passenger side just behind the cab there in that louvered door. It is a gas three-cylinder Kubota pony motor. I believe they're rated at somewhere in the 60 to 90 horsepower range. And... Uh, the benefit to that is you don't have to leave your main engine idling. Uh, you don't have to worry about, you know, fuel economy or overheating or, you know, just extended idle is not, you know, a lot of times a real good thing for a, uh, for an engine. So the uh, Pony Motors are, uh, are built to handle it and the Kubota builds a, a great little motor. The Pony Motor is, uh, is much louder. Um, and you would not be able to hear boom issues. If someone ever demonstrates one of these trucks and they don't want to run it with the PTO, uh, let that go on your radar that uh, the boom is probably a noisy boom. Um, so, you know, take a look at the video. He's going to bring the outriggers up now and then he's going to pull off. Uh, take a look at the video and give uh, Maria a call and let her know if you have any questions. If you need to see anything else particular, let us know. Uh, but this truck does run, drive, and operate great. Um, we sell a, a lot of these trucks. Um, the, the big benefit of the gas-powered truck over the diesels for us is, and for you know as many, as many years as I've dealt with these, is there's nothing about this truck from a powertrain perspective that is going to be real expensive to repair or replace. It's easy to maintain. It uh, most of the parts can be bought at O'Reilly and AutoZone, and uh, you don't have to have a special mechanic. Um, you know, just any sort of uh, of general mechanic can typically do these, do the work on those trucks. So, um, you know, a, a, to replace an engine on that truck is uh, about what a minor problem on the diesels cost. So uh, we, we view that as a huge benefit to the small business. So uh, give us a call. Uh, you, if you can't get a hold of Maria, or if you have questions for me, my number is 972-765-7819. Uh, my name is Scott. You can uh, reach me, uh, you can text me there or email me. And uh, if you need anything, just uh, give Maria a call. We're going inside. We're gonna upload this video to you. Thank you.